Neville Goddard, 16 December 1968. In his poem called Europe, which is a prophecy about you, William Blake said, Then Anitharman woke, nor knew that she had slept, and 1800 years were fled as if they had not been. Told in the form of a story, Blake used the name Anitharman to express any emanating desire or image. Anitharman is the emanation of loss, who, in the story, had the similitude of the Lord and all imagination. Entering into his image, his Anitharman, loss dreams it into reality. And when he awoke, he knew not that he had slept, yet eighteen hundred years had fled. In my case, 1959 years had fled as though they had not been, and I had no idea I had entered into an image called Neville and made it real. But I, all imagination, so loved the shadow I had cast, I entered into it and made it alive. To those in immortality, I seemed to be as one sleeping on a couch of gold, but to myself, I was a wanderer. Although lost in dreary night, I kept the divine vision in time of trouble. I kept on dreaming I was Neville until I awoke, not knowing I had slept, yet 1959 years had fled, as though they had not been. Blake tells us that in the beginning, we were all united with God in a death like his. Then we heard the story and entered into our shadows. Now, a shadow is a representation, either in painting or drama, in distinction from the reality portrayed. Paul recognized the shadow when he asked the Galatians, Who has bewitched you, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? Let me ask you only this, did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh, by seeing Jesus Christ as someone on the outside? Having heard the story of Jesus Christ, you are called upon to enter into it as a central character and remain there until the story externalizes itself. God destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Falling in love with his image, God entered it and became his son. Having declared what he was going to do, God does it through his pattern called Jesus Christ. Knowing what you want, when you conceive a scene that implies you have it, that objective becomes the pattern for your desire to unfold. Jesus Christ is God's pattern his purpose which he set forth for the fullness of time. Christ is the plan, the image God entered and made so real, he claims he is the image. God's plan has completely unfolded in me. When I awoke, I knew not that I had slept, and 1959 years were fled as though they had not been. This is true for every child born of woman, for we were all gathered together and united with him in a death like his. Therefore, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like the his. Blake, writing in 1794, knew that 1800 years had fled when he, Anitharman, awoke. Blake knew he was the emanation the shadow god entered and identified himself with. Blake tells us it was the image that awoke, knowing not that she had slept. The emanation is always feminine. Eve came out of Adam. Every desire is feminine, regardless of what it is, be it a house, money, or a new car. Imagination is the male, which must leave every doubt, 
every thought of impossibility behind and cleave to the desired emanation until they are one. To do this, imagination must enter into the shadow and remain there until there is only the awareness of being or possessing the fulfilled desire. In this world of Caesar, it could take an hour, a day, a week or a month to awaken the desire within and project it on the screen of space. But you must enter into the image and remain there, just as God did in the foundation of time, in order to make you himself. God so became me that he awoke in the tomb. I did not know I had slept. In fact, I did not know I had been placed there as I had become so one with it. In his book of Milton, Blake tells us that when he entered into his shadow, he appeared to those in immortality as one asleep on a couch of gold. But to himself, he was a wanderer, lost in dreary night. Is that not the story of everyone? Lost and confused, imagination is faithful to the image he has assumed, saying, I am John, I am Ray, or I am Natalie. Now, in the image of the being I fell in love with, Neville is my emanation, my shadow, and the image I have been faithful to. Many a time I have thought myself a wanderer in dreary night, confused and not knowing where to turn for a dollar. But those contemplate on death saw me as one asleep on a couch of gold. They knew the purpose behind my entering into the state of sleep, but they did not know what I was experiencing. You are in this world because you are in love with the being you believe yourself to be. You may say that is not true, but I say it is impossible for thought greater than itself to know. Do not believe anyone who claims to know. Do not believe anyone who claims to love someone else more than they do themselves, for they do not. It is impossible for thought to be greater than the image it believes itself to be. Yes, you want companionship, security and health, but these are all part of the image you fell in love with and entered. You are now alive because you, a living being, have given the image called by your earthly name, life, and you will transform it into a life-giving spirit, because that is what you really are. Before this drama called life began, you predetermined a perfect pattern called Jesus Christ, which would lead you back to where you were prior to entering into the image. Now, in this world, a man who wants to be a success in business can sit down and map out a pattern, a scene, which would imply he has the success he desires. Then, if he enters the scene and believes its truth, the pattern of success will unfold and the world will confirm it. But he must persist in the image of success, just as God persisted, for the day will come when God will awaken and express the success he believes himself to be. God enters into the image of every child born of woman to give it life. At that moment, God's real and immortal self is, to those who dwell in immortality, as one sleeping on a couch of gold. But to himself, he seems a wanderer, lost in dreary night. The day will come when he will awake, and unknown to him, 1800 or 2000 years will have fled as if they had not been. Use the same technique God used to become you. As one whose name forever is I am, God fell in love with you, his image, and entered it. Now knowing you are, you say I am, so God is occupying his image and now answers to the name you were given at birth. Intrigued by the idea of expressing himself in a, blob, in a body of flesh and blood, God entered this body by dreaming he is Neville. God laid himself down within me to sleep, and as he slept, he dreamt he was I. For 1959 years later, when God awoke, I knew not that I had slept, and upon reflection it was as though it had not been. For when God achieved his objective, which was to awake and was conscious of the fact that he was the one he loved, all time vanished. Before awakening, there are barriers that separate God and his image, but once his objective is achieved, God awakes to the awareness that he and his image are one. This is the story the world celebrates and calls Christmas. Christmas is not the incarnation of God, but the awakening of man as God. 
Having fallen asleep and entering his image, God made it a living being. In Blake's case, it took 1800 years. Why does it take one, two thousand and another thousand years to awaken? It depends upon the degree God is lost in the dream. To what degree are you lost in your dream of success? Your world is your dream pushed out. When you can persuade yourself 100% that you are successful, success is yours. You must become so intense that you completely forget it was only a desire. You must tame the wild, new state you have entered until its naturalness causes you to forget all else. This is how God became you. Jesus Christ, God's pattern of salvation, begins to unfold as you awake and resurrect from the tomb God entered. Being life itself, God entered you, his shadow which has no life of its own, and made it alive. Entering death's door, his image, God, lay down in the grave of that image, in visions of eternity until he awakes. In the Old Testament, the question is asked, Rouse thyself, O Lord, awake. Why cast us off forever? And in the New Testament, the Lord awakens to discover he is one with the image he fell in love with. Having fallen in love with being you, individually, when God awakes, you are he. That is Christmas. When God incarnated himself in the image he so fell in love with, time was divided between BC and AD. Blake tells us that for him, it took 1800 years for God to move from BC to AD. In my case, it was 1959 years. Each case is different, as we are told, each in his own order. I do not know whether this order was predetermined or not, but the book of Ephesians tells us that he destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. The God that dreamed in me is the same God that dreams in you. Was it really an order that I could not have awakened before 1959? I do not know. I only know that was the year in which God awoke in me. Yet I did not know I had fallen asleep in that skull. But when I emerged, the symbolism recorded as revealing the birth of God surrounded me. That was the moment God awoke and was born into a higher region of his being. Having identified himself with the one he loved, that one was raised and born as God. God is in love with his image, his shadow, which, like a reflection on oil or water, is dead. Having no life in itself, God so loves his shadow, he enters it, and dreams he is it. Being a life-giving spirit, God first animates the shadow, and it becomes solid and real in his world. He walks and talks, knows sorrow and joy, sickness and health until the dream is complete. Then God awakens a pattern by which he will know he has arrived at the end. This pattern was predetermined. The first segment is to awaken and rise from his sleep of death to be designated son of God in power. Then he discovers his fatherhood when his son calls him father. A short interval later, he cuts himself in two. This is his sacrifice for this wonderful accomplishment. Fusing with his blood, which he finds at the base of his spine, God ascends as a fiery serpent. Then the final sanctification comes in the form of a dove, which descends and smothers him with love. For God has now accomplished what he set out to do. You can imitate God while here in this world. If, for example, you desire to be a great artist, acclaimed throughout the country, map out a plan of success just as God mapped out a plan of fulfillment which he called Jesus Christ. There are multiple ways to imagine success. Choose a scene which would imply you already have achieved success and when it unfolds, you will know how it came about. Do this and you are testing the infinite power that you really are. Having entered the shadow that, that I conceive myself to be, I walk the earth wondering where the next dollar is coming from, yet those in great eternity see me as dreaming on a golden couch. 
but I am still faithful and keep the divine vision in time of trouble. Then, like a woman in labor who bears its pains after the child is born, the pain is forgotten in the job of fulfillment. So it is when Christmas comes and you, individualized, become God. The same technique God used to make you real can be used to bring your desire into being. Blake said, If the spectator could only enter into the image in his imagination, approaching it on the fiery chariot of contemplative thought, if he could only make a friend and companion of one of these images, he would rise from the grave and meet his Lord in the air, and then he would be happy. God entered into his image therein, giving us life. Being a life-giving spirit, God wants us to be just as he is. So he mapped out the pattern that through it we may be God. When we completely fulfill his predetermined pattern, the barrier will be torn down and we will be one with infinity. Christmas, as celebrated by the Christian world, is not Christmas. It is not something that takes place on the outside. Christmas consists of a series of events which begin when God awakens within the shadow. He entered. Rising, God desires to come out. And since all things are possible to God, he pushes and a seemingly unbreakable seal falls away and infinite power comes out. The predetermined symbol must be there. If it isn't, then the vision is an adumbration indicating nearness. It is a shadow cast before coinciding with the actual vision. These visions are recorded in the four Gospels of which three were written in or about 150 AD. Scholars believe the book of John was written at the end of the first century, however, making it possible for him to draw on the source material of all the others. John eliminates the story of a genealogy of virgin birth but emphasizes the need of rebirth. He doesn't tell you how it is done but using the word anathen, he tells you the birth is from above. There are two births. The first is from the womb of woman and the second from the tomb above, and each birth is essential. Also, you must rise in the same manner as Moses raised the serpent in the des desert. John claims that God himself became you, saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwells in us. Here we see that God became flesh, as you are, and says, I am. So God is incarnated as an animated being, but that is not enough. He wants you to be as He is, and God is a life-giving spirit. In order to do this, His pattern must be fulfilled. And when it is, you enter an entirely different sphere, called the Kingdom of Heaven. Having fallen in love with your image, God entered that shadow and made it alive by falling asleep. Now dreaming he is human, he loves you, the being you identify with today. You may not be in love with being poor, but that is not you. You could, you could be rich if that is your desire, but you are in love with being yourself. You would not give up your individuality for any other being. You may desire to have what someone else has, but not if you have to give up your identity. At one time, that which you have so identified yourself with was only a shadow, an image God entered. It was dead, and by God's entry, he made it a living being. And when God awakes, that living being becomes a life-giving spirit. If it is a true awakening and not just a foreshadowing, the drama called Jesus Christ will unfold in 1260 days as foretold in scripture. Do not be discouraged if your visions are foreshadowings. The promise will be fulfilled, for you are keeping the vision in time of trouble. At times, like Peter, you may have denied that you are God, but you are still keeping the divine vision. I fell in love with being Neville, as you fell in love with being you are now. You have dreamed poverty into being, health, being loved, being ignored, but you have never lost your vision of individuality. You will never lose it, for that is the one you fell in love with. And in the end, you will awaken as God, individualized. 
even know yourself to be a life-giving spirit as you move towards ever greater and greater individualization. That is the purpose of the entire drama. And that is what Christmas means. When it happens, I do not know. Blake certainly was not 1800 years old judged by the world of Caesar. He was born in 1757 and wrote his poem Europe in 1794. Blake was speaking of that second birth, believing that if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall be united with him in a resurrection like his. Blake looked upon this division of time between BC and AD as the beginning, claiming he was one with God, when, falling in love with his image, he became universally diffused individuality. Starting as we did, the God in him took 1800 years to complete the drama and awaken. In his poem, Europe, Blake speaks a cavern man and his five openings, his eyes which see only a small section of infinity, his ears which will hear the music of the heavens, his breath and mouth totaling four. But Blake does not tell us where the fifth one is. He does, however, tell us that through this opening, man may leave at any time and return. But man does not choose to do so. What is that one but imagination? Standing here, I can imagine myself elsewhere. What opening do I use to imagine myself there? The fifth one of the five openings of the cavern man. Soon, the Christian world will celebrate this wonderful mystery which is completely misunderstood. But one day, you, individuality, will experience scripture and know the true mystery of Christmas. Then you, too, will say I woke and knew not that I had slept. The sensation is one of waking, not resurrection. You know you are in your tomb, yet your skull, because of an innate knowledge, you will push from within, and the stone will roll away as you are born from above. Three witnesses will be there, two will deny your birth, and one will confirm it, for you are fulfilling scripture. But two or more persons agree in testimony, it is conclusive. One witness declares, you, as the father of the sign, the child wrapped in swaddling clothes, you, the father, witness the event, and scripture, the written word of God, bears you out. So you have three witnesses, all agreeing in testimony, the Bible, you, and a third. This is the story of Christmas, the time when the prophecy made to you before that the world was, is fulfilled. Now, let us go into the silence.